Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to hit some of the best eye candy Chandra has to offer. We're going to see an excellent paper on auroral extent, and then one out of Latin America that pinpoints one of the 6,000-year cycle events, finally giving it a name. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was relatively calm up there, less so here at Earth. Solar flaring is hitting low M-class range, but not in any significant manner. The plasma filaments are large, but so far stable in the corona. The story so far today is the corona hole on the south. It's fast. Solar wind appears to be arriving here at Earth this morning, about 24 hours before it was expected. Geomagnetic conditions could amplify today and could last about 36 hours until the peak speed plasma dies down. The corona hole allows faster particle streams to emanate with those open field lines, making for a solar wind that is more like whitewater rapids than a trickling stream. We'll be monitoring those geomagnetic conditions while also watching for eruptive activity either at the filaments or the sunspots. Up first in the science today is the latest from Chandra, 3D visualizations of supernova remnants. These were put together using a lot of longer wavelength data as well, but the X-ray inclusion by Chandra really gives the details needed. It can see things that the radio, infrared, visual, and ultraviolet wavelengths simply cannot capture. Many of these views have field lines added, the importance of which wasn't fully apparent to astronomers until the magnetic dusty pinballs paper a few years ago, detailing how dust and isotopes got stuck at the Nova remnant because of the magnetic fields. Now we're off to the team breaking down auroral extent of solar storms. It's pretty clear that while they don't address the May 2024 solar storm, they formulated pretty good rules using historic events, and if you remember how last year the auroras beat just about every previous example, it means that shouldn't have happened, which we've told you about a hundred times. They do suggest that about a two degree equatorward expansion of the auroral oval is likely at this time due to the ongoing magnetic pole shift, but that's also confounded by the motion of the pole, especially for American longitude extents as the magnetic north races away from the USA. Speaking of the ongoing pole shift, I love it when geologists are so timid of breaking a mold they accidentally move science forward. This group is drilling down into the details of the excursion 30,000 years ago and found some of the most definitive evidence. The problem is they, and many others, confused that event with Mono Lake, which was actually 36,000 years ago. In reality, it is distinct, and this is enough evidence to call it out and name it officially thanks to the Michoacan volcanic fields. We can now call this event the Michoacan excursion, and here's the full list of the last 60,000 years. Only the one 54,000 years ago and the one unfolding right now lack official names. Every 6,000 years, a solar climate geomagnetic disaster. It peaks again on Earth in the 2040s, going to get very bad in the 2030s. Learn more at the links below the video. Folks, grand opening at Observer Ranch is this coming weekend. Dr. Robitaille joins us, and there are tons of other events following it as well. Bit of early news, we're being called one of the more kid-friendly campgrounds. Worked hard to be that, by the way, so bring your little ones. Tons of other events as the summer unfolds, pole shift conferences every month, then prepping for this disaster, sit rep days every other month. And don't forget, if you just give us a heads up, come anytime. I'll come out just because you did. We love doing that, and it starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.